Hello everyone, Sam from Sam GB Rebuilds and today I'm going to be talking about my new project I'm starting with all this here. This is a Marusen M1100. Um, I bought this one a couple of week, weeks ago on a Japanese auction site and I received it a week ago and I took some pictures, not a lot. Um, I wanted to film the function but Due to limitations in available green gas and also just internal integrity of this thing, I've decided not to film a whole how does it work video because I am just want to start modding it. So in this first video I'm going to be talking about the main action of this gun. Why is it called the GBB and why can it be truly called GBB compared to some other offerings on the market like the SG9000 and yeah, that's the only gas operated semi auto shotgun that I can think about. So let's open up this receiver and take a look inside. So, to give a little disclaimer about this video, uh, some of the main parts of this assembly are missing mainly the shell lifter, the extractor side plate that's riding onto the carrier, and the shell brakes. Those are used to feed the BBs in the right order when the bolt is cycling. Uh, those pieces are sent to someone to 3D mold them, so I'm able to get spare parts that way. Um, if one of those parts breaks, I can 3D print them and just put them inside this build. Just for spare sake. Um, parts are available, but very hard to get and this way I'm able to hold on to some pieces if they break in any way. The function of the gun is a lot reliant on the trigger system. This trigger system is very simple. Um, it consists out of two pieces, mainly the trigger itself, a long piece up, long piece up here connected from the bottom to that pin there and the second piece is the long bar going up here you see there's a longer notch and a short notch why is this um, if you fire most GBBs use a hammer to give pressure to the valve in one go so it's a direct and consistent pressure press press uh, I really don't know how to say that um, in this case, you, when you pull the trigger, it pushes on the valve. Um, it's recommended if you use this thing, give firm and very decisive pulls on the trigger to make this thing more efficient. If you pull the trigger half, it will not work, it will malfunction and it will give problems. That's one of the big downsides of this system. When you pull this trigger, Gas will be released, and if you keep pulling this trigger, gas will keep being released. So that's a problem. How is it solved? That's very easy. Um, when the gas is released, like any other GBB, gas will expel through the front. The NPS valve will kick in. It will shut off the forward uh, movement of the gas and will. Redire redirect everything backwards into the carrier, making it go backwards. When a carrier is going backwards, it will eventually hit this back on the second piece of the trigger. So when the trigger is pressed, you see the valve will go down. But the moment the carrier hits this knob, it will pull down and release the valve. It's a very simple system, I've seen this on some other GBs uh, like this. Um, one that I like to mention is the MP9, it uses something very similar with the trigger bar uh, for the semi-auto and even full auto release. So, up, to, up on to the next thing. So, something else I want to mention about this trigger is this piece, this piece, this spring, and two copper brass nubs. 
are inserted into an O-ring, a ring, a tube inside the trigger. If you see this ring, and I push it, it will move. Um, what does it do? These two pieces are wedged between the shells, both halves of the shells, and they will prevent the trigger from moving fluently, like it now does. This is to prevent light strikes. Um, if you pull this trigger not decisive enough, you will get problems, because if you pull this trigger, it will go halfway, third of the way, full, and that's not what you want. You want a full decisive punch onto the valve. This is mainly the reason of this. If for, if you use this, you will have very atrocious trigger pull. But when it opens up, so when you pull hard enough, these pins will close in, and you will get a very decisive trigger pull because it releases, and all the energy you put into the trigger will be going directly into the valve. I understand why they put this in, but if you're working on this, you know what you're doing and you will not need this to make it function properly. The carrier and the nozzle itself are very simple. Um, the, ca the carrier by its own is very lightweight, made out of a decent aluminium. And it has screws on both sides just to insert the two extra pieces that are required for the function of the gun. Those pieces are, as I said, up to someone to 3D model them, but they are not needed in when I show the function of it. The nozzle itself is quite interesting by itself because the usage of the copper tube. Um, for the rest, this is a pretty normal, I say normal in the sense of nozzle. Um, this nozzle is speci especially designed for the fake shells that Marusen's, the Marusen system use. Those shells fit right into the cup and it will seal between this part and the rubber seal on the back of the shells. Nothing special to mention about it. Something that I want to mention, um, mine, because even with the slightest use, um, these things, the nozzle and the carrier got misaligned and hit on, hit on the wrong places, and my, uh, how do I say, it? my seal got budged, it got broken and I need to replace it. Um, I've read online um, by a Dutch German uh, post uh, that was regarding is that M9 piston heads will work on this in combination with the standard nozzle. I'm gonna try it and I will report back if I've got decent results of it. The feeding system of this mold is quite important in it being a GVP. If you look at all the other shell ejecting shotguns out on the market, they're all pump action. Because they're pump action, they can take advantage of the pros of the real steel firearm and they can just push, push the shell into the breech of the barrel. In this thing, that isn't possible. Um, thanks to the travel that the nozzle and the carrier needs, this is not really an option. What, what I've done in this case is really simple. Um, the little movement that's available for the nozzle, and I mean it's little, it's as long as the copper tube, that's, that's all for movement. They've made it able to be a shell to be pushed in just in top and be wedged between uh, this front part and the nozzle itself. The movement of the carrier is quite important for this whole system because by 
with a normal GBB, you're reliant on the connection between the carrier and the nozzle, but in this system it isn't. As you have seen, I can dis disassemble the nozzle from the carrier without any springs, nothing at all, and that's quite unique. Um, almost every GBB on the market has a, con has a spring between the nozzle and the carrier to pull the nozzle back when the carrier has reached a certain point, but in this system it doesn't. And I'm gonna explain why. Why, did, why is it not needed? Um, when a shell is injected in the system, you fire, a gas will be, will be released by the valve, will go into the copper tubing of the nozzle, go inside here, a part will be expelled with the BBs through the barrel, NPS valve kicks in, it will send the carrier and piston back, but the nozzle will stay in place, all the way. But, as I mentioned, there's an extractor plate on the side of the carrier. So when it moves back, the extractor, I'm gonna put a picture in so you can imagine what I'm saying, will go back and at a certain point it will catch in this lip. In this lip where the rim of the shell is sitting. When that happens, the shell, in conjunction with the nozzle, will be pulled back so, imagine back at the point, it will go back and the shell will be popped out. But as I mentioned, that was the thing pulling on this was only the extractor. The real ejector of this whole system is that little knob down here that's fixed into the shell. That is the extractor uh, ejector. The extractor pulls the cartridge out and the ejector gives it the motion to go out of the system. So, thanks to the movement of the outer shell, this thing will be pulled fast enough back to hit the ejector and go outside the system while a new cartridge, cartridge is inserted in. So, with this I'm gonna end the video. If you have any questions about this, just send them to me. I will try to answer them, um, you can place those in the comments down below or just send them to my Facebook page. I'm gonna try to make more videos about this thing because I'm very interested in its internal workings and I want to put out some information. Most of the information available now is are some posts. There's one disassembly video that I know that it's that is pretty in depth but not really explaining how it works and most of the other videos that are available is just show people showcasing how this thing fires and they saying oh i've done an upgrade he shoots it and that's all for the things he explains about it so with this i'm gonna try to go more in depth in the building the mechanics of this thing the compatibility with different parts